staple in Russia, 7.62 by 39 is an iconic round in Escape from Tarkov. Not only just that, but the AK platform that fires it recently received some buffs. So let's talk about the AK-103 and more importantly, some of the best builds and how you can tame the recoil on this monster, whether it's budget or if you want to ball out with that low recoil. Before we get into the video here today, I do want to remind you I do stream on Twitch. The link for that will be featured down in the description below if you want to swing by the channel and watch me firing some AKs live. So let's talk about buying the AK. The first thing you need to realize is that there are plenty of different 7.62x39 guns you can purchase. Stuff like the AKM or the AKMN or the AKMS and it goes on. But all of these AKs actually get outclassed statistically stock by the AK-103, a far more superior and modern weapon. Not only just that, but you can actually purchase some of these AKs that are from Rashala's goons, which actually have a lot of awesome attachments on them already, and people do sell them for a decent price, so keep your eyes peeled for that. If we compare an AKMN and a AK-103 side by side, we can see the first major difference between the two is ergonomics. The AK-103 absolutely kills the AKMN in terms of ergo, and is also on par when it comes to vertical recoil. Now the build on my right for the 103 is also cheaper, but it does lose out on the horizontal recoil, being 152 on the AKMN compared to the AK-103's 160 horizontal. This is one of my favorite guns for making money, and I really do use this quite regularly. The truth is, if you have high level traders and you can purchase the JMAC, please put this on your gun. But if you are really desperate and low level and everything is expensive, use the SRVV as it has slightly worse recoil reduction. Let's jump straight into the handguards here. And we're going to be looking for the Zenit B10 AK handguard. Both cheap and effective, it also gives you 1% recoil reduction. As for grips, you have plenty of different choices. Obviously, you can do something like the Viking UVG, but it isn't really that much cheaper than something like the Magpul AFG, which is actually superior in terms of ergo. Not only that, but it also looks really nice as well, so that doesn't hurt. When it comes down to the rest of this gun, it's very simple. All you really need to do is slap on a butt pad, and then you have the option of a dovetail mounted scope. Now, obviously, you can put a rail on the dovetail mount and mount whatever scope you want to, but I would recommend using a dust cover instead of this, like the Bastion. Now, obviously, because this is the budget build, I'm going to have to recommend the Cobra EKP because you can't beat it for value. Once you put the shade on there, the red dot is quite nice and crispy, and it also doesn't actually cost you any ergo to have this scope on. But honestly, when you use this gun correctly, you can't go past the fact that the gun and the attachments itself cost you about 78000 sometimes a little bit higher than that. But honestly, that's amazing value, and it always comes back in my insurance. So let's have a look at that recall. Now, obviously, I decided to put a Bastion on there and the JMAC Compensator, as this is how I usually run this budget gun as it can get that recoil just a, down a tiny bit more. But you can see there's a lot of heavy jumping behavior at the start, but it gets a lot better as the spray continues, and it becomes a lot more tighter near the middle of the mag. Now, what you're really paying for, especially with fully automatics, is the distance between where you're aiming and how far the muzzle actually climbs. So the more you lower the recoil, the smaller the distance the gun will jump initially. But by the time it evens out, you have to deal with horizontal recoil. So we're going to be starting off with the JMAC. Going straight in the handguard, I'm going to choose the Troy combo block. Now, this thing replaces the gas block, so it won't be in the handguard section. Then we're going to be putting the 4.2 inch guide on. And then obviously, we're going to be settling for recoil reduction with the Zenit RK2. You can obviously do something like the Zenit RK1 or, or keep to the Magpul AFG if you don't really mind the recoil and you want slightly better ergo. But honestly, it's definitely worth the money. Now you have a choice between the Scorpius or the Tapco. Now the Tapco is a little bit cheaper and one ergo worse, so this is why I always choose this grip. We're going to be going with the Bastion as it actually reduces your recoil, which is that dust cover there that allows us to mount a scope and also a butt pad. This entire build is going to come in at 70 vertical recoil and 169 horizontal, which is actually really, really achievable and very easy to use. The best part is this build will only cost you about 134,000, sometimes a little bit more depending on the market, but you can get Troy gas block combos for quite cheap. So enough talking about budget and mid tier, let's get into the juice. Obviously starting off with the JMAC, obviously we're going to be going into the VLTOR CMRD handguard. 
Now this thing is amazing. Once again, hitting it with a six inch rail and then underneath that is the Zenit RK2 for the most recoil reduction. After we're done here, we're going to be removing the iron sight and once again going with the Bastion dust cover as it reduces the recoil and has the best amount of ergo. Mounting a scope, I do like the SPX0 as it's nice and high. Changing the pistol grip, we are going to be settling with the Scorpius Aeronox here because it is quite cheap and has the best stats. Now obviously taking the stock off and then switching towards the PT-74M lock. And then putting the Zenit PT-3 Classica stock on here. And that's as good as it's going to get with a little cheeky charging handle here to get a tiny bit more ergo. Now this gun's going to have 66 recoil and 160 horizontal, which is a little bit more expensive than the higher tier build. But you are paying for like 5 to 6 recoil. And I honestly don't see the point in spending this much extra money on that much recoil. And that's why you will always catch me using that mid or upper tier builds or the budget if I'm really trying to make money. Now, this gun is an absolute laser beam. And obviously, if you are going super kitted, you can see that recoil is quite nice there. And I do have very low assault rifle skills on this character. Now, as for suppressing it, you have two real good choices. The first one is the Hexagon DTKP. But obviously, we are going to be selling with the PBS-1 as it has the best recoil reduction here out of all of the suppressor choices. With that being said, you do lose a lot of ergo when choosing the Zenit RK2. So something like the Zenit RK1 or maybe the Forda Shift Grip will be a better choice if you go suppressed. However, you are going to pay for it in recoil. Now, this gun may be suppressed, but the recoil is not really as nice as it was because obviously you are getting rid of that JMAC compensator, which is honestly just freaking insane. Now, as for ammo choice, I mean, there are a few different choices, but I would always choose 7.62 BP as the price to performance is amazing. With 47 pen and a lot of flesh, BP can be very reliable up against the level 5 armors and with a couple good shots can bring down level 6 quite quickly. If you guys want to see it a little bit more in depth, I have another separate video. I'll link that in the top right corner or down in the description below if you want to see this ammo stacked up. But for real, guys, you can craft 7.62 BP in your hideout. And that's why I really love this caliber. For the amount of money you spend compared to a lot of other different ammos, it really performs really well and is one of my favorite rounds in Escape from Tarkov. Hey guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed any of this content here today, consider subscribing. I will be working on other gun guides just like this one. So make sure you subscribe because you won't want to miss those. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.